I think we can all agree that when it comes to texture painting, Substance Painter has been the king of the hill for many years now, especially in the field of game development. Well, throughout the months, we put the theory to test and compare it to many dominant texture painting alternatives like Blender, Mixer, and Mari. And each time, Painter came out victorious, for the most part at least. But today, we are shaking things up a bit by making it go head to head against ZBrush. Yes, you heard that right. I know it is a bit unexpected to bring up a software like this here, but the truth is it got some hidden abilities when it comes to texture painting. So what are these features and abilities and does ZBrush stand a chance against Substance Painter? Before we get into the main topic, let's first take a moment and check out what we are dealing with in the first place. And honestly, these two tools have relatively similar origins. Substance Painter is a software that traces back to Algorithmic, a French-based company that started from nothing with Sebastian de Goy in 2003, and after years of ups and downs, their breakthrough came with Substance Designer 4 their first successful product from a business standpoint. And after that, since Designer was a texture creation software, they couldn't help it but think that the only logical continuation to this is a software that lets you do texture painting, I mean directly on 3D models. And fast forward to GDC 2014, that combination became a reality with the public beta release of Substance Painter. And since then, the tool became the industry standard for texture painting software in video games especially, with its use cases being beyond that especially in VFX, product design, and more. And for the case of ZBrush, you might be scratching your head, thinking this comparison makes no sense. However, you would be surprised to hear that it is not the situation at all. So let me explain. ZBrush was first presented at Seagraph in 1999 by the innovative minds of Pixelogic, a small company that was funded by two guys, Offer Elon and Jack Remark two years prior. The software right out of the gate made a name for itself and managed to climb the ranks to become a golden standard for 3D sculpting in the market, and even changing the 3D sculpting landscape forever. And since those days, no one could ever rival what it did, not even close. That is, until the recent development of 3D Code and Blender. But generally speaking, I would say one of its strongest rivals was Mudbox back in the day. This is all about sculpting, but what about texturing and texture painting? Well, while there isn't a clear timeline that can help us follow its progress, the software has been adding texture painting features for about two decades now as a secondary functionality. And it is a trend that we can find, for example, in the 3.1 version that was released in 2007, all the way up to the latest versions. But what I'm really asking here, can it outshine Substance Painter at least to a certain extent? To start things off, I would like just to mention that when it comes to texturing, you can never go wrong with Substance Painter. I mean, it is the industry standard after all. And that is for a reason. Substance Painter is a layer-based texture painting software, and the best way I like to describe it is that it is kind of how Photoshop works, or Illustrator, where you can add texturing effects on different layers with the ability to adjust and modify each layer separately. For example, adding scratches in one and dirt in the other. To do so, you have two different approaches that you can mix. The first one is what you would naturally expect, which is manual painting. The software comes with a library of alpha brushes, such as scratches, grunge, symbols, patterns, and more, which you can use to directly paint on top of 3D objects, but also the ability to load new brushes, as well as the ability to choose the channels to paint on, such as the basic color, metallic, roughness, and height. However, the true trademark of the software is its procedural workflow. To put it simply, you have what we call smart materials, and they are a preset of a stack of layers that contain different effects, which can adapt and react realistically to any models that you can add to it. For example, add rust to corners, like how it would happen naturally. But what if you don't want to use smart materials? Well, you can use their ingredients separately, and these are smart masks, generators, and filters, which are procedural solutions to create your own effects and combinations that you can also adjust with sliders. For example, you can use a generator to add edge wares 
a smart mask to cover part of a texture based on a pattern and generate dirt or using a filter to add more blur or just in the colors. Now, when it comes to ZBrush, the story is a bit different. Remember when I said that Painter uses a mix of two approaches? Well, for the case of ZBrush, it's all about manual painting, with no support for any procedural texturing workflow. And I get that this is a bit of a letdown, but the software still has a bunch of features that Substance Painter can even dream of. So what are these features? But before we get into that, let's address the elephant in the room. ZBrush is notorious for having a confusing user interface and an uncomfortable way of moving around in the 3D space. But it does get easier once you get used to it. On the other hand, it also supports a layer-based workflow for texture painting and a simple method of painting. If we look into the left of the software layout, you have some icons to adjust the color as well as the brush, stroke type, alphas, and so on. Besides, you can also adjust many of their settings or even load custom ones. And this is more or less the general idea of painting with ZBrush, and it only depends on how good you are at manual painting. But you can always benefit from, for example, loading an alpha of a skin or something similar. Now, an area where ZBrush stands out is poly painting, and this is a system in ZBrush that allows you to paint on the model surface without the need to first assign a texture map or even do UV unwrapping. This can be really powerful, because let's face it, we've all been there. Working with texture maps and realizing you need more details and resolution in the spot can be a problem. However, with this system, you can jump right in, without having to think about fixing anything beforehand. And let's not forget ZBrush's exceptional ability to handle millions of polygons. But is this really enough to challenge Substance Painter? I'm afraid this is not the case. Look, in today's age, procedural generation is the bread and butter of any modern texturing workflow. The reason for this is that, while manual painting can be great for hero assets, it is just not realistic enough to paint every single asset of a project because it would take a long time. Besides, even for hero assets themselves, procedural textures can serve as a great base that you can build upon. And achieving the same level of photorealism in ZBrush can be very hard, not to say impossible in some situations. For example, let's use the example of dirt. In Substance Painter, you can generate it automatically based on a set of parameters, which the software knows how to use. And you can do this to create a realistic looking dust on the areas where it should be. Then if you don't like it, you can adjust how it looks, and you can generate different variations of the seed value. As for ZBrush, you would have to paint all of that manually, which is not great for saving time. You know what they say, it's not the tools that matter, but who you are as an artist and what you can do. And while I am on board with that idea, and I totally get where this is coming from, we can't deny that ZBrush is highly limited in this regard. I mean, when it comes to texture painting, sure. If you really know what you're doing and you know your ways around the software, you can achieve highly realistic results, especially when it comes to organic projects. But it is gonna take longer and it falls short compared to the advanced features of Substance Painter, like for example, its procedural generation abilities. Because ZBrush is first and foremost a 3D sculpting software, and I think that texture painting or painting in general is a nice addition that can help you work on some projects. It is also worth mentioning that both the software were acquired. Substance was acquired by Adobe and ZBrush was acquired by Maxon. And I believe they switched exclusively to subscription-based models. This might be pricey in the long term and a lot of you guys will need them both. So it is important to take that into consideration. So if that's the case, then ZBrush can do a decent job when it comes to sculpting and you will use Substance Painter for texturing and texture painting. And there you have it guys. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to the channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.